like to show you a real world example of combining machine learning and language models together into one use case. Often machine learning and language models are kind of confused, maybe even thought of as the same thing. But here is a real life customer deployment that combines them together into one simple use case, which I think gives a really good delineation between what the roles of each of these models are. So first of all, to kind of set up what our client is using both of these models for, you'll see that this is a custom application that was created for them to be able to create estimates for jobs. It all starts by creating a new job. And then what a salesperson does is enters in a natural language description of what the job is going to be. You see here, they could be talking to a customer on the phone and really just dictating what it is that the customer wants. A little bit of shorthand here that you see. And then ultimately what happens is that another user will come and interpret that description into the line items that are necessary for the estimate to be able to do the actual job itself. Now, the way that that human does that is based on a bunch of training and business rules that they've been given to be able to turn any keywords that they see in the description into line items. Now, what we were tasked with doing with the machine learning model then at that point is go train on a bunch of job data. So estimates turn into jobs. This is very common in a lot of organizations. And what we're doing then is we're looking at the efficiency of the estimate line items against what the actual job work was. And we created a machine learning model that will take their initial best guess of what the estimate line items are and actually turn them into the appropriate estimate line items because we've trained estimates against actual jobs. So what we do is we go into the future, so to speak, on all the estimates and see what work actually had to be performed at what quantities so we can improve the modeling process. This way, a human can still go and decipher the description that they see here, but then what they could do is actually turn it into more accurate estimating processes. So what we do is we start off with the rules that the humans are given to be able to read that description and turn it into line items. And ultimately, it's just a bunch of business rules that map keywords like pre-flight into a specific item code or job code like GST-008. So what we did is we worked with the subject matter experts who had the expertise in this, and we were able to create this document that maps all of the keywords in natural language together with what the line items need to be for the modeling purposes. Then what we do is we actually create a data dictionary and then a function, a function that simply maps those keywords like pre-flight over to a estimate code, which would be GST-008. We then actually create that function inside of the application that's doing the estimates. And then what we do inside that same application is we create a prompt. So this is an example of a prompt. It's just one element of the prompt that combines together with the data dictionary and then some of the data itself, the actual data that comes from the description, that then triggers all those together into what's called a prompt template that can communicate all that information over with the language model and then receive back what the line items need to be. This is what the example of the output looks like. This is the information that comes back from an API call to a language model. And then what we do is we parse that data based on the rules that were established in the data dictionary. That then gets fed into the original application that's making the API call. So at this point, what we've done is successfully converted the description into line items based on the rules that were given to us in the data dictionary. Now what we are doing is triggering the machine learning model portion of it. So what we did is we had some training data, which was in this case, 778 estimates. All of them were actually one so that we can see where we were able to convert a estimate into a project. Each of them has the corresponding job, and we took 1168 columns, each as an individual code, and trained our model accordingly. So in this first step, what we're doing is we're getting the data ready for analysis. We're using this data set that I just described as information about different aspects of the project. This information can be thought of as ingredients that help predict the outcome of the project. So we're making sure that the data is in good shape by checking to see if we're missing any of the values or any blank spaces, for example, and just getting it ready for analysis. Now in this next step, what we're doing is we're focusing on the parts of the data that are most important for our analysis. So think features are characteristics that describe a project like its budget, complexity, and the targets that we wanna predict. In this case, the targets are the different job codes that might be associated with the project. So we're removing any unimportant columns that won't impact the output of our model, or really help us make good predictions. Now we're making sure that all the features and the targets are on the same scale. It's like putting everything in a common language so that we can compare them effectively 
This step is actually really important because it helps us model our work a lot better and make accurate predictions. Now, this is where we come into the magic of the machine learning. This is where the prediction itself starts. Imagine a project is a unique puzzle piece. We're comparing a particular project with its nearest neighbors, which is an actual term that's used in machine learning, which are similar projects in this case in the data set. So it's like finding projects that are most similar to the one that we're interested in. Then the model then learns from these similar projects and tries to predict which job codes are associated with the projects that we're focusing on. Now in this next step, what we're doing is finding the best way to make our predictions accurate. We're adjusting things called K, that determines how many nearest neighbors to consider or sort of our threshold that we want to consider. And this is a bit like figuring out how many puzzle pieces around the one we're looking at will help us create a clearer picture. In this case, a clearer picture of the appropriate job tasks. We're experimenting to find out the settings that make our predictions closest to its actual desired outcomes. Now what we're doing is evaluating the model. We're really testing how well the model works. We're looking at each project and seeing how close our predictions are to the actual outcomes. It's kind of like grading our model's performance on a bunch of sample projects to understand how accurate the outputs are. And then finally, we're picking out the projects where our model predictions are really good. These are the projects where our model is confident in its predictions and likely correct. It's kind of like finding the examples where the model shines the brightest. So at the end of all this, this process helps us take the project data, understand what's most important, and use it to predict which job codes will be associated with each project. It's a way to make informed decisions about projects based on historical patterns. And that's the role of the machine learning model. And when you put all these things together, a user can create a new job, enter in the natural language description, and then the language model will actually convert that into line items. A user will add some quantities. And now the machine learning model evaluates those line items and quantities and says, no, actually, these are the line items and quantities that will match the job more effectively, thus increasing the profitability of the project by just inserting machine learning models into the process.